Well, I'm headed out for Royal City, Washington this morning. It's way down in the Columbia Basin where the surveyors set up the stakes and declared this is the middle of nowhere. And I'll tell you, the wind don't blow down there is sucks. Well, long about now, you might be asking yourself, Self, what in the world is Ken doing now? Well, I'll tell you what I'm doing now. I'm cutting buds. I'm cutting chip buds. We are chip budding grapes in Royal City, Washington today. This is how you make the chips. We pre-cut these chips and I'll show you how we insert them into the vine and make, make the graft with them. But I have cut millions of these things. I'm not exaggerating when I say millions. I stood at the back of my truck in California one time and for six weeks and cut these buds. We did 800,000 vines on one job and I have spent many 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 nights in a motel room in California cutting these buds for the next day you pop them off the mirror right into the bathroom sink and then you strain them out and put them in a, a thermos jug and put some ice on them and oh, they'll keep about three days grafted 400 acres one time down there in Salinas Valley. I got, oh, I mean like 99% take. It was really good. And with this exact technique right here, that's grape root stock. When the, when the stock is so small that you can't really put a regular graft on it, then you use a, just use the bud. This is called the eye of the bud. And uh, then the piece that I cut, it's called the bud shield. What it sits on, the eye of the bud, sits on that bud shield. And uh, we make the exact same cut on the vine and then insert that little chip. And it's tied in, tied in with tape. I'll show you that here in a little bit, but I've got to get some, get some more. Uh, buds cut for Victor. That's what they look like. Cut them into the strainer. Just keep them damp. Cut them into water. Um, from here, after I get Victor enough buds cut for today, which I just about have, I am going to leave Royal City. I'm going to go chainsaw down the next job. It's down in Ellensburg. So, if y'all want to see kind of my travels, in a day. Just Google Wenatchee, Washington and go from there to Royal City and then from there to Ellensburg and there back to Wenatchee. You see I put on a few miles in a day. But I've got a pretty good old rig to get me there. I don't mind driving it. Alright. I'm gonna shut up and cut some buds. Okay, I'm going to try and show you this. I don't know if you'll be able to see this in the video or not, but there's a, well, up near the tip. Let me turn this the other way. I'll call that the pointed part out the tip. Up near that, you can kind of see the bark. You can see it there on top. When I roll it over, you can still see the bark. So between that bark and that white wood is the cambium layer and it's a very very narrow line that runs all the way down the side of that both sides uh, between the bark and the hardwood and you have to cut a, a notch in the vine to expose that cambium layer a notch the same shape as this chip and then slide this chip into it so you're lined up on that cambium on both sides and that's not easy to do it takes a little bit of skill at least some practice 
I'll see if I can demonstrate that for you if I can get this camera set up. I don't have my tripod, so I'm winging it here. Bear with me. Okay, I'm going to see if I can get in frame and make this happen. Anyway, what Victor's doing out there is uh, he cut a receiving slot in the vine and then slip this chip into it. And when that is so exact that the uh, the guys taping ha have trouble seeing it, they don't have trouble distinguishing this one from this one. This is a natural one. And uh, you know you're doing a good job when you get it so, so accurate that, uh, that they have to look for them. Actually, the reason we're doing that here is uh, we're doing some repair work. I did some graphs here last spring and they didn't do as well as I'd like. I mean, it grew, this one grew. You can see it comes off the graft here and it's growing but uh, just for insurance we're gonna put another one on there in case they break one out I mean this is just part of what I do here's another one that grew uh, but there's a few out here that did not grow so uh, it's just part of my services I come back in the spring and and go through and we'll uh, we call it pickup work we'll pick up anything that didn't grow so that we get a full vineyard for the owner and that's uh, uh, just part of the part of the service we provide, I guess. Uh, I'm not making any money out here today. I'm spending some money on these guys, but you know, just taking care of my business, and it'll all come back to me. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get these cut up, and then uh, head for uh, Ellensburg. See ya. This video is for one lonely farmer or this segment of this video anyway I just wanted to show you this farmland you said this is your kind of your kind of place and it is this is known as the uh, lower Columbia Basin irrigated from uh, a reservoir uh, way up on the Columbia River there, I forget which dam it is is that Chief Joseph Dam? No, I don't know I don't remember I'll have to look it up. I'll put a correction in this video, but if it's wrong. Anyway, it uh, it's, irrigates this whole Columbia Basin down here, and they just grow everything down here. I mean, there's just things going on down here I had no idea. I started coming down here, and oh man, it amazes me the things that are going on in my backyard. I mean, all of a sudden, I was down here one time, and, and, and we smell this mint, and there was a, uh, a mint processing plant you can smell that stuff all over the country and there's apples and pears and cherries and uh, potatoes and corn and carrots and sugar beets and on and on and on and I had some clients that uh, I did grafting for but they also they were row croppers and they had these special bees they were uh, Raising bees, how do you, what do you say? I don't know what you call when you, when you propagate bees and <laughs> sell them. Anyway, they had these special bees, alfalfa bees, that only pollinate alfalfa. Uh, I mean, who knew, you know? So, yeah, one lonely farmer, this is your, your kind of country. I mean, I'm just sitting here in my truck looking at it, and you already know more about it than I do, what's going on here. I it's a lot but today we're in the vineyard business right there they are uh, the reason I filmed this from my truck is because the wind's blowing out there and uh, plus I kind of like to hear this old thing rumble in the background anyway okay see ya Trouble. 
Well, I'm here at the next job, and uh, you can see there's a few trees out here. There's more over there, and there's more over there, and there's some more over there, and there's the tops off of some of these trees that cut down. It's going to make a lot of firewood for somebody. Probably one of the guys on the ranch will sell it. Um, anyway, doing something a little different here. They're going to have us stump these trees by stomping them, I mean cut them off and leave a stump and that's it. Um, normally on trees this size, it is not my policy to stump graft. I always like to leave one leader, one primary scaffold, it's called a nurse limb, because there's such a root system under here that's going to push a lot of sap when that sap comes up in the, in the spring, which is, it's starting to come up now, but I worry that it will flood the grafts and they'll just sit there in that sap and kind of sour rather than healing in, but uh, knowing this, they insist on doing it this way. I voiced my concerns with the manager and he said he is willing to take the risk because of the way they're going to train these trees. They're going to be on a V trellis and they want to start low. And they're, they're going to cut them. Our, our goal is to cut them 20 inches. Some of them will be just a little higher or a little bit lower depending on where that limb is. We need to get under those knots, but uh, I don't like it, but I'm going to do it. Anyway, um, yeah, that's going to be some really hard chainsaw work because they have to cut, be cut level on top. So you're going to be bending over it. Every one of them, and there's 5,000 trees out here. By the way, this is, I don't know if I mentioned it, this is the last job of the season. Um, other than when this is all done, I am going to run down to Oregon and grab a, a few grapes down there, but it'll only be a couple days. So basically this is it for our main crew. Uh, and then Victor will be heading back to California soon, or back to Mexico soon, back to Zacatecas, back to his commercial tomato growing operation, and I'll be getting back to important things like rat rotting. Okay, well, it started raining, so, uh, what time is it? Let me see here, I decided to get off the chainsaw, it's 3.30 now, so, uh, I've been out here staging this field, in other words, I'm dropping, you can see those cans of paint. I drop those every so often um, throughout the field and then uh, the painters don't have to walk so far to fill up their buckets and uh, it's just more efficient. So that's what you gotta do. Anyway, I uh, thought I'd shoot a little video on the way out of here. Boy, that's a gorgeous view. The view from my office today. Um, anyway, I roll that window down over there and so you can kind of get an idea of the scale of this job, what uh, idea of what 5,000 trees look like. And we're probably going to put in a uh, out there chainsaw. There's some bigger trees over there, but they're going to take six graphs and then a lot of them are going to take five there's some that'll take four but i think it's going to average five so uh, we'll put in good 25 26 thousand graphs out here and we need 28 thousand in seven days i told the guy yes it takes six days but um we put on hired on three more people and we're going to try and do this in five days, but that's just a lot of work, you know? It's a lot of hard work. Good old fashioned hard work. And I'm getting so I kind of feel that chainsaw. I've had my back, had surgery and my back fused and a disc removed, and I've got another disc that's just about gone, and the vertebrae is kind of real close to pounding on each other, so. This chainsaw is not near as much fun as it was 30 years ago. Anyway, I heard my guy, I need to 
talk to the ranch foreman about getting that wood out for us uh, so we can start cutting up grass wood but you get an idea how big this job is and uh, as I said earlier this is uh, pretty much the last last big job of the season unless I get a phone call which I could happen but uh, I'll be okay either way this is gonna be a nice place to work the wind doesn't blow Sure is a pretty view. The guys were stringing out drip line earlier, and these ladies are out here uh, attaching it to the grounds and putting in the emitters. So they're getting everything ready to go. It's a pretty nice wood pile there, isn't it? And here's some more of the job. We like to start on the big trees. And work our way down and starting in long rows and work to the shorter rows and it's just advantageous psychologically to do it that way. <laughs> you start getting into shorter rows and you go man I'm making those turns a lot quicker now and the next row shorter and you almost kind of hurry up you know just because of that. It's just a psychological effect. Um, I think that's about it. Got one more little piece I'm gonna put on the end of this video. I think I'll uh, get home. I'll try to give old Brown a call and see where he's at. Put him on the speaker phone, and y'all can say hi to him. Uh, he called me at four o'clock yesterday morning. He left out uh, Monday morning. Yeah, so he should be down Wyoming or somewhere by now. Okay. See you later. Oh, Lordy. Tarred. Tarred and feathered. Brown shell. Let's see if he answers. Says it's dialing. Pick up. Wow. He's probably sound asleep. 7.30 wherever he is. Wake up, Brown. Not even going to voicemail. Well, we'll try him. We'll try him tomorrow night, you guys. See if we can get a hold of him.